Hey everybody, and welcome back for episode 89 of The Path Podcast. I am Jason. Hey, I'm Derek. And we are so glad that you've decided to join us on The Path this week. We took last week off, it was Labor Day, um, but it actually works out really well so that we can talk about all of Revelation chapter 9 as a whole, because we, we really would have had to kind of stop at some point um, and, and not really have a full discussion. But so, we can today. Um, we... We're going to look at chapter 9 before next week we're going to move on into something else, take a break from Revelation for a few minutes but um, or for, for a few weeks. But um, today let's talk about Revelation chapter 9. And uh, in Revelation chapter 9 we, we see these woes pronounced on uh, on humanity that is that is left on earth. And um, maybe let's, let's do, I think it would probably be helpful just to connect both of the weeks. Let's do a bird's eye view of kind of what happens in chapter 9, and then let, let's dig into a couple of things. Yeah, basically chapter 9 is the fifth and sixth trumpets. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things we've talked about um, as we look at the trumpet um, the trumpet blast is that they are, you know, a warning shot, a warning sound of, of things that are to come, um, you know, um, a warning is usually sound so that people can collect themselves, understand, and yeah. and, and avoid it. Uh, but um, yeah, that, I think about like a like a tornado siren. Yeah, absolutely. But hey, there's something coming this way. Yeah. You need to get ready for it. That's right. Yeah. So you know, we're we're looking at at those trumpet blasts. There's um, you know seven total. So we'll uh, in the future look at the seventh. But what we see here is. Uh, the destruction that follows those, um, and and what helps us really connect the two, and really all of this is there's this inevitable nature mm-hmm. of this is just the natural thing that should happen yeah. because of the um, uh, how the destructive nature of the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of, uh, of death and sin, the, the kingdom of this world mm-hmm. has wreaked havoc yeah. all this time. This is, the things that flow out of this are the natural consequences, consequences yeah. of where that was heading. Right. I once heard a pastor tell a young man who was surprised his life ended up in the way it did, and he said, bro, you were... It ended up exactly where you're aiming it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so we, we we understand that in our own lives, in our own context, that I end up at a destination because that's where I was aiming my life. Yeah. Same thing here is that the world is spiraling toward an, an inevitable end. Yeah. Uh, because of of destruction, uh, mm-hmm. the destructive nature of that, and so uh, you know, week one. We looked at this woe, and we, we, we looked at the the one who came out of the pit or out of the abyss. We realized that by looking at Isaiah chapter 14 that that was Satan himself. Mm-hmm. And so this is the kingdom of Satan rearing its head against the kingdom of God. Yeah. And ultimately the kingdom of God wins. So Right. The, the inevitable nature of it all is that the destructive nature of the kingdom of this world will end in destruction, be yeah. destroyed. Um, the the celebration of sinful rebellion, rebellion will be destroyed. Mm-hmm. The toleration of evil will receive evil's torment. We see locusts stinging yeah. people; it's hurting them for five months. You know, all this is mostly symbolic, but this sure. this idea of, of, of torture and torment because yeah. of uh, the celebration and the toleration of evil yeah. again and again and again. It's just going to inevitably do this. The example I gave last week was, and it's, you know, it's not a fully correlating uh, example, but it's one that we can understand, and that is like oftentimes when our, when our children are disobeying or doing something um, that will inevitably end poorly for them yeah. and we warn them we tell them don't do that again there will be a consequence yeah. if you do that again it'll be that and uh, you know I find myself warning and warning I don't like to dole out punishment right 
uh, and that woe pronounced is that kind of moan, this this groan of this is what has to happen. Yeah, and that's oftentimes in my parenting. You know, I get to the point where I have to give a consequence because right. the poor behavior has continued, and though I warned and warned and warned, it wasn't heeded. Yeah, and that's the same thing here is that warning after warning after warning has been given, and it's not being heeded. Right. And so the natural consequence of that is for destruction to happen. Yeah. And I think you, you see that in your your um, the, your description of what woe means. Yeah. Um, and just that, like, it's not that God's sitting up there going, finally, I get to punish these yeah. people. God is not doing that. God is saying, I don't want to do this, but you're because of your actions, <clears throat> I, I have to do right. this. This is the consequence of what you've chosen to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, in that way, I think it does very much correlate to to the way we parent sometimes. Yeah. That listen, I don't, it's, I don't want to give you a spanking, but, yeah. but you've chosen to do something yeah. that requires me to give you a spanking. Yeah. And um, and this is a, a very similar. I mean, it's on a much higher scale, but you, you have chosen humanity mm-hmm. to do things that require me to punish yeah. and, and now I'm going to do those things yeah. so. you and we see it at the end of chapter 9 mm-hmm. we see the stubborn yeah. um, pursuit of what this fading away world has to offer Yeah, that even in the midst of all of this chaos and all the destruction based upon um, the, the enamorment with you know, people being enamored with the kingdom of this world, yeah. there are still people, after it's all said and done, that continue yeah. to worship Satan, to worship right. this world and his kingdom, and hard-headedly mm-hmm. say, nope, this is what I'd rather have. Yeah. I see what's happening out there. I see that I could avoid it. Yeah. That's not what I want. I want destruction. Yeah. Yeah. And, th- and that's, that. honestly, that that is our nature. Our nature is that enmity with God's and his kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's what makes grace so amazing is that Jesus, despite that, while we were still sinners, while yeah. we were still rebellious, right. died for us. Um, and, and and thank God by his grace, those of us who have turned to him, you know, our eyes were open, we saw a need and we, we responded. So yeah. um but that you know that you know some will say, how could a, a good God do something like this um, how could he send anyone to hell the fact of the matter is that we're all destined for hell yeah and he saves those who right. just listen right and follow right well and I think too that that's that sentiment makes an assumption that we're all good anyway yeah <laughs> how could how could a good God do this oh how, yeah what well, why would a good God not do this yeah. is, is the better question yeah that's it, it. yeah if he's a good God he's going to punish rebellion yeah um, he has to otherwise he's just a doormat that mm-hmm. he, yeah I set the standard but you know live up to it if you want to but yeah. if not no worries yeah um, and uh, that yeah that would be most unloving and most mm-hmm. un, un uh, Ungodlike for him to do that. Yeah. So. Well, back to the parenting example. I'm, uh, I can't. I wish I knew exactly where it was right now, but I think it's in the Beatitudes or the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus says, "You being a good father wouldn't mm-hmm. allow your children to play with snakes and yeah. vipers." He says, "Right." You know, it's right. it's the same thing. It's like I'm telling you the truth here, so that you will turn, so that you know your lives can change. <clears throat> right. And um, so he is a good, good father that warns us again and again and again. But here, and you hear it in that woe, it's just this groan, mm-hmm. this like deep groan of, gosh, this is what it's come to. Yeah. This is what I have to do. Right. And uh, and and that you you see in both weeks, but mm-hmm. the the chapter you see just. Full onslaught of the kingdom of Satan. Yeah. You know, um, bunch of horses mm-hmm. out of their mouths, fire, smoke, brimstone. Yeah. And what we see is that anytime you see anything coming out of the mouth of Satan or anybody in his uh, charge, it's lies. Yeah. It's deception. And that's what we talked about yesterday. Yeah. 
was that the se- the deception of Satan burns us. And um, in looking at that, you know, we, we looked at, again, just reminding ourselves of what this was originally written for and to whom it was originally written was those seven churches in Asia Minor. <clears throat> John receives this vision from God. God's showing him what's going to happen, and John is trying to convey that to them so yeah. that they know... Uh, um, what, what is ahead of them, it's part an encouragement and a thing to inject courage for the things they're going to face yeah. and in part a rebuke and a, and a warning of <clears throat> don't let yourselves continue down some of the roads that you're going on. Yeah. So even yesterday we reminded ourselves of the, the lies of Satan that Ephesus believed and Thyatira yeah. believed and Laodicea believed and Sardis believed. Mm-hmm. These lies of Satan that had infiltrated their church. Yeah. And you know, Go back and listen to the message, you know, and you can hear those again. But the thing that I'd like to just talk about for a moment is that we have to be careful. Yeah. What lies are we listening to? Not just individually, but as a church as well. Yeah. Like, because Satan is a deceiver, mm-hmm. Satan, that's what he does. He seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Peter says, you know, be sober-minded, look around you, because... He's coming for you. Yeah. He's a roaring lion waiting to devour you, seeking whom he may devour. James said that you should uh, you know, res- uh, resist the devil mm-hmm. and stop sinning. Um, you know, so, and flee from sin. Yeah. So w- we have to constantly be aware yeah. of the lies that he's spreading. I think this is... This is In a way, what I've been trying to communicate for months as we've studied spiritual warfare on Wednesday nights and in other avenues is that, you know, we depend upon Jesus to do the warfare for us. Right. Our job is to stand firm, as Ephesians says, Ephesians 6 says, stand firm. That means that we need to be aware. Yeah. We need to know where it's coming from so that we can extinguish those fiery darts with the with the shield of faith uh we we just put it at rest when we can and so because satan's deception and satan's sting we see those snakes in mm-hmm. the tails of those horses yeah. uh, stinging everyone right um those things will lead to an inevitable end of destruction right um and um and torment mm-hmm. and um, if we wait if we wait until this moment we've yeah. waited too long right it's too late and what you see in that final picture there is you see these snakes stinging people because of their idolatrous hearts yeah. they've worshipped the the kingdom of this world mm. uh, and we have to be careful of that we have to be careful you know I think last week I said we cannot hitch our trailer yeah. to this world and not expect there to be some kind of uh, re- recourse for yeah. our actions yeah absolutely um, Laodicea they believed the lie of Satan that they could have one foot in this world mm-hmm. and one foot in the kingdom of God you just can't No, no. You just can't when we were talking before, you said something specifically. Share, share that about you know we 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 often want to think about how close to that line we can get, but yeah. there's something really else we should do. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, you know often, and I think you could we could go back to use our illustration of, of our children. You know, you, you tell you tell your kids, hey, don't do this thing, and mm-hmm. they say, okay, well, how close can I get to this thing without doing it before mm-hmm. you get upset? And we do that. We do the same thing. We know. Oh, yeah. We never go past that as adults, but yeah. uh, a lot of times we think, how close can I get to the line of sinning? without crossing it before God gets upset, when in actuality, we have been told, like you just mentioned in the book of James, to flee from sinful yeah. actions, to run away from it. Let me see how far away from the line yeah. I can get, not how close I can get. And one of the things that you were talking about how, you know, we have to look at this as a, as a letter to these seven churches. And one of the things that, that just dawned on me that I think is super helpful for us is that we can place ourselves in the same uh, camp or the same place as um, the six other churches as we're reading a letter about one church. So what I, what I mean is that 
the people in Sardis were not struggling with the same thing the people in Ephesus were struggling with. But by reading the, the section of the letter that was to Ephesus, they can say, oh, man, we should be on guard against that stuff. Mm-hmm. That We're not struggling with that at the moment, but we very easily could be. Yeah. Uh, and likewise for all the other yeah. churches. And I think that that's, that's a great way for us to look at what we what we're looking through here is that while it's easy for us to kind of disconnect ourselves from what we're reading here and say, oh, well, you know, we're not struggling with that or, man, that's far off in the future. It, it's really good for us to, to be reminded we have to constantly be on guard. It's mm-hmm. not like, um, I, I heard somebody say this past week, nobody is ever going to accidentally grow closer to Jesus. Mm-hmm. You're not going to, as a pastor, you're not going to have somebody walk into your office and go, you're not going to believe this. I wasn't even trying, but I woke up this morning and I'm closer to Jesus than I mm-hmm. was yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's always going to take intention for us to stay close to Jesus, that we mm-hmm. have to work on that and to stay away from sin. And so um, being, I think being reminded of let me flee from sin and let me cling to Jesus. Um, and while that may sound elementary, what what else do we have? Mm-hmm, <laughs> let mm-hmm. me cling to Jesus and let me flee from sin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and to me, as, as we've got up to this point, because we're we're s- sort of at the halfway mark on, in Revelation right now, that up to this point, I think that's kind of the overarching message. Jesus is incredible, mm-hmm. and we need to cling mm-hmm. to Him. And sinful actions will always lead to judgment mm-hmm. and death and destruction. So let's flee from those things. Yeah. Look to Jesus, flee from sin. Mm-hmm. Um, and while this was written 2,000 years ago, th- that's still completely oh, true yeah. for us today. Oh, yeah. Cling to Jesus and flee from sin. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, uh, and, I, and I think that that's, to me, that's really what has stood out over these, these last two weeks. Because to me, one, I mean, there's lots of, of uh, difficult passages to read in Scripture. Verses 20 and 21 of chapter 9 of Revelation might be the saddest two verses mm-hmm. in all the Bible, in my opinion, where, you know, just the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, nor give up worshiping demons and idols of gold and silver and bronze and stone and wood, which cannot see or hear or walk, nor did they repent of their murders or of their sorceries, of their sexual immorality or their thefts. Mm-hmm. That these people were so far down the trail toward idolatry and hitching their wagon to sin as we we said a while ago that even though they see their friends, their family members being killed or dying because of uh, the judgment that's being poured on humanity, they still said no, I'm still going to continue down this path Mm -hmm. I'm not going to look to Jesus Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and gosh, how sad man, Mm -hmm. how sad yeah. May we never get to that point, mm-hmm. you know. May we be on guard, mm-hmm. uh, like like we've been told over and over again to mm-hmm. uh, to cling to Jesus and and run away from sin. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that that's that is, it's just sad. Yeah. But if we are so entrenched mm. with this world and what it offers us, in it, at times it can be very alluring sure Satan's the master of lies the father yeah. of lies he can, he loves to make it look real yeah. tempting but if that is what we are enamored with and entrenched in um, no wonder these people couldn't see sure that their very own choices were just meeting their inevitable end yeah and that's that's the hard part, right? But like we like I said yesterday, just as Moses raised a serpent up so that those stung by the snakes uh, in the uh, desert in the wilderness could look to it and be healed, mm-hmm. Christ Himself was raised. Yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, what is it? I think it's Psalm twenty-two that says nothing about him was like mm-hmm. it, alluring yeah. or anything that we should want or desire. Right. Yeah. It's really humble. Our God was put to death. Yeah. He was a bloody um, um, uh, uh, person on a cross. Yeah. And that's what we're to look at. Right. That's who we're to look to. 
to find our healing. Right. And uh, it's not as alluring as what the enemy and this the king of this world usually holds up for us to look at. Sure. But it is healing. Mm -hmm. It will heal our sin sickness. It will heal the sting of idolatry in our lives. And so we look to Christ. We look to him in his death on the cross. And we look to him in his resurrection. Yeah. Because he's alive. He's not that bloody person on the cross. He is alive today. He's triumphed over it. He's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. But he's the lion of Judah as well. Yeah. Uh, in all his glory for us to gaze upon and right. realize it's far more worth it, yeah. far more worth it. It's usually the things in life that are the simple, um, non-sexy things yeah. that are the most lasting and the things that in the end we're like, man, I'm glad I was able to do those things. Right. It's just the mundane, the normal, the mm. simple, you know, and that's how God works. Yeah. Satan wants to allure us away with, you know, enticing, uh, pleasure-filled uh, visions. Yeah. And um, they might look good now, but eventually they'll sting us. Right. And so we have to be cautious and real, realize that we must look to Christ. And uh, I pray that anybody listening to this or anybody that's heard these messages would know If you have breath in your lungs, there's still time to turn to Jesus. There's still time to be healed by his death on the cross of your sin sickness and uh, the sting of idolatry in your life. And there's still time for you to trust in him. Um, And I pray that you would. I pray that you would call in the name of the Lord. Read Romans 10, 9, 10, and 13. Read 11 and 12 too, but primarily those three verses and that will show you how you can trust in Christ call on his name and be saved and forgiven of your sins as well yeah absolutely I think that's a great place for us to pause for this week Um, this is where we turn it over to you what is what is God speaking to you how maybe 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 there's the I need to turn away from some things. I need to flee from some things. And maybe this is a time that, that God is getting your attention. Um, or maybe you can say, thank God that I am in him this mm-hmm. week. And uh, we would love to hear about either one of those things. We'd love to help you walk through fleeing from sin. We would love to celebrate with you God leading you in the paths of righteousness. And um, you can do that by starting a conversation by emailing us at the path at lafayettefirst.life or you can comment on this YouTube video or any of our social media sites Uh, you can do that Um, next week like I said we will take a break from Revelation for a few weeks and talk about who we are as the body of Christ here at Lafayette First and how um, that should impact that understanding who we are impacts the way we live Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's that's really important so we're going to talk about that for a few weeks Uh, but we hope that you'll join us until then I am Jason I'm Derek and we will see you next time as we continue down the path